Guten Morgen von Zurich. It's time for another adventure. This morning, I'm in Swiss's first class lounge in Zurich International Airport, and I'm about to share with you a flight in Swiss first on their 777-300ER. Hello, YouTube travelers, and welcome to the Gentleman of Fortune channel. Join me on my travels around the world, and together we'll review the latest in flight and lounge offerings, find out how various airlines' first and business class products stack up, sample their catering, and indulge in their finest champagnes. Together, we'll experience the best of the best, and maybe some more obscure ones too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. And now I invite you to sit back and relax as we get this next adventure underway. The Swiss First Lounge features warm wood tones and rich leather couches, creating a comfortable environment in which to await your flight. But what I'm most impressed with is that you can check in and pass through security screening and do your document check all within the lounge, then depart directly from there. This allows you to mitigate most, if not all, the myriad of requisite hassles. And you can indulge your sweet tooth while you're doing it. Or if that's not your style, perhaps you want to have a smoke in their cigar lounge. As for me, I think I'll stick with breakfast. There's a beautiful variety of small plates and breakfast items that are available for grab and go. as well as soft drinks, juices, beers, and sodas. But the real main event here, and the one which I'm holding out for, is the a la carte dining. A nice serving of chef-created eggs benedict with salmon is not a bad way to pass the time while they take care of your document review. And then, at the appointed time, it's just a short walk down the hall to reach your waiting limousine which will take you directly to the gate for your flight. One thing to note is that it's not necessarily a private transfer, depending on the number of passengers on your flight. You may be escorted to a sedan, or as was the case in my situation, a limo van. While I would have preferred the S-Class, I was impressed that on the limo van they went to such lengths that they even upholstered the seats on the van with a matching window pane check fabric that they use on the aircraft seats in first. The transfer service drops you at the aircraft gate where you ascend to the terminal level via elevator and then join the normal passenger channel to go out to the aircraft via the air bridge. Okay, so here's a first look at the seat in Swiss First on their 777-300. To me this seat exudes business executive. I feel like if you were trying to portray a Swiss banker as an airline seat, this is exactly what you'd get. Six out of the eight first class seats on my flight were occupied, and I booked last minute, so I was relegated to the center section. But I did get the best view of the Matterhorn on the bulkhead. The warm wood tones that we saw in the lounge extend into the first class cabin. Here within easy reach we have seating and lighting controls, and inside this compartment we've got the controller for the IFE, as well as some storage where you'll find your headphones, and a headphone jack. You'll have to excuse me jumping back and forth between seats 2D and 1D in the darker video and some of the shots. I distilled footage from two different flights I took on the same day to make this video. At the aisle side there's a personal closet that pulls out to reveal hangers and it also forms the privacy door on the suite. It meets up with this wooden wall section which comes out of the aft portion of the seat to create a pretty good privacy screen. At your shoulder, you've got a personal reading light, as well as the controls for that wooden panel. If you're at one of the four middle seats, there's also a button that controls the privacy screen that goes up between each of the two seats. Even seated fully upright, it's now pretty private. Towards the front of the suite, there's a panel that reveals the huge wooden tray table. It can be slid back and forth into several different positions, which still allows you to exit the seat even if the table is out. Each guest in first is offered a set of sleepwear. I found them to be pretty comfortable. With their black color and the poor lighting, it's pretty tough to make out much detail. But really the red button on the chest pocket is about the only thing there is to see. Now here's a look at the Gents Amenity Kit, which comes in this handsome pouch by Swiss fashion brand Bally. I like their signature red and white striped ribbon that they use for the handle. This kit comes with a pretty comprehensive assortment of amenities. 
let's take a look at what it's got inside. It comes with all the usual suspects, plus some. As far as cosmetics go, there's four tubes from La Prairie, featuring a cellular hand cream, a Sheer Luxe Skin Caviar, a Lip Balm, and a Skin Caviar Luxe Eye Cream. They also offer a trio of Swiss-branded non-medical masks. Here's a look at the Ballet promotional material. Now since I actually flew two flights in Swiss first on this trip, I also got the ladies amenity kit. It's also from Bally, but comes in this more compact pouch. The only substantive difference is that it comes with this brush comb combo and this pretty basic vanity kit. Now here's a look at the headphones that are provided for Swiss first. They're not the fanciest, but they get the job done. First class passengers are also offered a card with a code for free Wi-Fi. It only covers 50 megabytes, but it's better than nothing. Now on to more exciting things. Shortly after boarding, I was offered a glass of Perrier Jouet Grand Siècle, as well as a prosciutto wrapped date, and some breadsticks. And now, a look at the menus, the first of which is the beverage menu, to be followed by the dining menu, which features cuisine influenced by Switzerland. While the food was being prepared, the flight attendant set the table. For my appetizer, I selected the bleak salmon and the tuna poke. Both of these were delectable, though I found it a bit odd that the other choices, such as the soup and salad, were presented more like alternatives as opposed to accompaniments for the meal. For comparison's sake, here's a look at the appetizer from my other flight, which featured a marinated lobster tail in a cauliflower panna cotta. I thought this was phenomenal. I followed this up with a lovely crisp salad with a generous serving of goat cheese atop. And what's more, I was excited to discover a secret underneath, a tasty foundation of beets waiting for me. For my entree, I enjoyed a beef tenderloin with a rutabaga gratin. Not only did it taste great, but I thought they did a very nice job of plating it with a full complement of vegetables. This is much better in my opinion than the all too common lonely piece of meat sparsely accompanied by a few spears of asparagus. I found that the steak paired well with a lovely Merlot they offered from the beautiful canton of Ticino. And for the record, I thought they did a great job of ensuring that it wasn't overcooked. Naturally, being Swiss, they had an impressive array of cheeses on offer. For me, the standout of this plate, though, was that spoonful of sharp orange mustard. I washed it all down with some lovely Kirschewasser. This is pretty high-octane stuff, and I think they did me in with it because they kept pouring more of it. The dessert course itself was also beautifully plated though I thought having meringue in the name of the dessert was a bit of a tease considering there was very little of it. After dinner, I took advantage of their onboard espresso machine to try to ward off some of the effects from the Kirschwasser. 
and on one of my flights they broke out some lovely chocolates with coffee, though sadly not on both of them. Here's my dessert course from the other flight so you have a chance to compare it. You can tell that the ice cream melted a little bit from when it was originally plated and then was refrozen. But the worst part about this was that it wasn't the beer flavored ice cream that was advertised on the menu and that I was eager to try. The lavatories on board Swiss First Class are spacious, though they don't offer much in the way of amenities. I suppose this is okay though, considering how many items were included in the amenity kit. I will say that it was very nice having two lavatories dedicated to First Class with only eight passengers. There was seldom a time where there wasn't one available. While I was away from the suite, the flight attendant transformed the seat into a very comfortable bed. A mattress pad and fluffy duvet made it extra comfy, and two pillows provided plenty of support. The dimensions of the bed are such that even someone six feet tall can comfortably stretch out. The bed itself was divine, but unfortunately, without personal air vents, I found that the cabin became a little bit too warm. I still managed to sleep until breakfast time, whereupon a full breakfast spread was laid out before me. I didn't think I'd have room for it, and so declined the offer for yogurt and muesli, but I did enjoy this very nice omelette with bacon and sausage. To be honest, Swiss First Class really exceeded my expectations. I went into these flights feeling pretty indifferent. I think this has to do with the fact that the lounge and the decon course has been closed for so long. This combined with anecdotal evidence that they didn't do a great job of refunding people whose travel plans changed during the pandemic. As far as these flights went, there really wasn't much to complain about except for maybe cabin temperature. And who knows, that may have had more to do with Kirschwasser intake. We may never know, but we will know if you like this video if you hit that thumbs up down there. And if you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. That notification bell lets you know when I post new content, so don't forget that one either. And as always, until the next video, safe travels.